Discover Geography. Lesson 1. What is geography? Students who take a geography class at the college level come into it with a variety of different ideas about what exactly it is they're about to start studying. Some seem to confuse geography with the discipline of geology, which studies rocks in the Earth's interior. Others have memories of memorizing state capitals from middle school or high school geography classes. And some associate the discipline of geography with magazines like National Geographic. At the college level, the discipline of geography is from the classical Greek G, meaning earth, and graphia, meaning writing. We sometimes describe it as maps, not rocks, to differentiate it from geology. But the best definition of geography as an academic discipline is what is where, why there, and why care. So when we look at the Earth through a geographical perspective, we're going to ask those three questions about a whole variety of different phenomena. So for example, we could take the case of LaBeouf Lake in northwestern Pennsylvania. So we can ask, what is where? Where is this lake? Where are the boundaries of the lake? What is it located close to? What are its coordinates? Where is it relative to any other features of the Earth that we might be interested in? Then we can ask, why is it there? Why is there a lake of this type in this particular location? And so then we can look to a variety of theories that might explain why a particular thing is in a particular place. So in this case, we have a pretty good idea of why Lake LaBeouf is where it is. It's an example of a kettle, which is a type of lake created by glacial activity. In a later lesson, we'll go into more detail about exactly how a kettle is formed. Then we can ask, why care? Why does it matter that there is this particular lake in this particular location? Well, in this case, it matters for the people living in that area because it was the existence of Lake LaBeouf that allowed the town of Waterford to be built. And the town began as a shipment point for salt on the early American frontier. As another example, if we look at the city of Detroit, we find that in certain neighborhoods of Detroit, we have an almost entirely black population. In other neighborhoods, we have an almost entirely white population. So if we ask what is where, we can look at the city and we can document which parts of the city have what racial makeup to their residents. Then we can ask why there? Why is it that this neighborhood would be mostly black and this neighborhood would be mostly white? And there are a whole variety of causes for this residential segregation within cities. One major one is a history of housing discrimination. So what you see on the screen right now is a map that was created by the Homeowners Loan Corporation in the early 20th century that essentially defined what parts of the city they would allow uh, black prospective home buyers to buy a house in and what areas they would reserve only for white home buyers. Then we can ask why care? Why does it matter that we have this residential segregation, that certain neighborhoods have a different type of racial composition to their population than others? Well, certain neighborhoods are better to live in. And so we find in the city of Detroit a really clear example that the environmental quality in the predominantly black neighborhoods is much worse than in the predominantly white neighborhoods. And you, s you see as an example here, hazardous waste facilities. Most of the hazardous waste facilities in Detroit are located in the predominantly black neighborhoods. There are very few in the predominantly white neighborhoods. When we're asking these three questions, what is where, why there, and why care, we can ask them about a whole variety of different phenomena on our Earth. And so we typically divide geography into four subfields that describe some of the different types of phenomena that we might be looking at when we're asking these questions. The first subfield we call physical geography. In physical geography, we're asking these where questions about non-human aspects of our Earth about mountains and ecosystems and the atmosphere. So physical geography is going to have strong connections with a lot of our physical sciences or natural sciences like biology, ecology, geology, astronomy, chemistry. And we'll see that when we try to explain why various physical geography phenomena are located where they are, we'll be drawing on theories coming out of those disciplines. So there's a lot of back and forth between geography and these related disciplines. If we can ask these where questions about aspects of the non-human world, we can of course then also ask them about aspects of the human world. And so we call that subfield human geography. 
And just like physical geography had strong links to the natural sciences, human geography has strong links to the social sciences. So we'll see ideas from sociology, anthropology, psychology, economics, and history coming into our explanation of what is where, why there, and why care when we're dealing with aspects of the human world. Then we can also look at the connections between those two areas. How do human factors in the environment relate to the physical factors? How does human activity shape our physical environment? And how does the physical environment shape our human societies? That subfield of geography is referred to as human environment geography. Our fourth subfield we call the mapping sciences. If we're going to ask these what is where, why there, why care questions, one of our most powerful tools for doing that is a map. So the mapping sciences is the subdiscipline of geography that investigates how to make better maps, how to do spatial analysis, analysis of where things are relative to each other. And so the mapping sciences, you can see, connect the other three subfields. Those three subfields all draw on the mapping sciences. The mapping sciences also connect to disciplines like mathematics, computer science, and visual arts that help us to make more effective maps of our world.